And then it's good that um, at times we try to fit in, as you were um, mentioning. I also, um, I believe I have mentioned it in my previous video that um, when I became saved, when I became born again and I decided to let go of all um, bad uh, friends or influence that were just a, a whole bad habit, I, I remember my friends telling me, ah, you are so boring. You know, they have to cut me off like, ah, 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 if we call you for, let's let's go clubbing or let's go for a party and whatsoever, definitely you're going to bring up Jesus things and whatnot and all that. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. It, it's going to be so painful or it's going to hurt you that, okay, I'm going to lose all these friends that we grew up together. I'm going to lose everything or whatsoever. But what matters most is, it, is Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Hi there, welcome to My Christian Journey, a platform where we talk and engage about tests, trials, and temptations, testifying the goodness of the Lord and how we have overcome. I'm sure everybody has fallen. I mean, a lot of times. <laughs> like a lot of times. Yeah, um, meaning to that, um, I haven't, I don't want to say I haven't fallen, fallen to that point. But I would say I have not grown to the point where I'm supposed you know, to grow. I haven't matured in Christ as much as I'm eventually supposed to. Mm -hmm. So I'd say my greatest downfall is a lack of growth. Mm -hmm. you know? But I'm working on it. Sooner or later, I'm going to go there. I have steps lined out. You know? not... But yes, I'm getting there. And did you ever feel rejected and then maybe challenges you going to varsity that okay these are certain things that I have to do and then these are certain maybe music that I have to listen to and okay my friends the whole dress code changes or okay my friends are inviting me to go to a club or to go drink or you are being, being pressured to have a girlfriend or whatsoever have you maybe experienced such? I don't know as by the way you think of that. <laughs> but yeah, so yes, um, I have I have had challenges, um, but not a lot on rejection because I never wanted to be involved mm -hmm. in the first place. So I wouldn't say I really experienced a rejection. Um, maybe on a personal level, because of personal issues with people. Mm -hmm. That yeah, but that's not even the point. Um, coming to varsity. 2023. So I didn't mention I've never lived in one place for more than three consecutive years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with the age that I am now, you can just imagine I've moved. I have been moving. Mm -hmm. So because I have been moving, you know, around for so long, and as a pastor's child also you get to meet other people. Um when I came to varsity through window, I had already known, you know, places. Mm -hmm. And that's the good part of fellowship, you know, finding a place to worship with other believers, you would not really slack. So coming to varsity wasn't really a challenge for me uh, because then I already had places, or I already had people in my life that would keep me accountable, mm -hmm. you know, as a believer. And I'm grateful to those people because they have kept me accountable. Till now, uh, I came to varsity, I found a place of worship as soon as I got here. So I already settled in, which kind of didn't allow me to slack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or rather to fall back, so it, it kept me in hold. Um, I have, I had a struggle with music, um, even before coming to varsity, back from high school. You know, honestly, now the gospel, the gospel industry is kind, is honestly not kind, it's, it's doing much better than it was back then. Yeah. Especially, it's now accommodating our generation, you know, the type of music we listen to. Mm -hmm. So back then, with our generation, for me, I would say the songs were boring. Mm -hmm. That's why I kind of... You read them, at least yeah, to those ones that are kind of, Yeah, yeah. so I had to dive in. But, but I, I, I grew up, man, and conviction started to hit hard. I got convicted. So Christian music is not boring. You, mm -hmm. just, you just didn't have this bad. Did you really get saved, or when did you really get an encounter with God? I know you you can't be living with your your parents. Yes, they are 
old pastors and whatever, but the really you didn't have an, have an encounter with God. You, you can be going to church. I'm just going to church because I have to. It's like a, it's a must. It's a, it's a whole habit or something that I found at home. It happens. I, I need to do that. But really, when did you decide that your God is real? I love you, Jesus. I believe in you and I want to follow you. So when did you have that encounter with that? Not because your parents direct you, let's go to church. I know, let's go to church. I personally, my mom, there was this whole rules. No, there won't be food. You won't go if um, what went to school the next day. You don't go to church and whatsoever. And then eventually, I'm, I'm just going to go. Not that I want to, but because I want the bread or to get something for school and whatsoever. But that is not when I really had an encounter with God where I decided, yes, I want to follow you. That happened on my own conviction on my own understanding. So I just want to hear from you guys. Okay, for me, let me start by the way I was baptized. Mm -hmm. So when I got baptized, I got baptized because people were like, she needs to be baptized. Mm -hmm. And so and they said a lot of things. And that I, I would say I was forced into getting baptized. Mm -hmm. By the time I got baptized, I know nothing. <laughs> Why am I Why am I getting baptized? Mm -hmm. I was like, for what reason? So I lived as a normal person. I said, ha ha. Why am I getting baptized? Since they want me to get baptized, I did it. I got baptized. After that, we were told that the pastor is gonna teach us and gonna go through us and tell us how to live as a person that is baptized, which mm -hmm. never happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like. Hmm. So it's normal to get baptized. Any, anybody can just get baptized. So I was like, I'll just do whatever I want. Not knowing that I'm destroying myself. Mm -hmm. Being baptized, I realized it later. I was like, Meg, you are baptized, right? Yes. But when you got baptized, I didn't know why am I baptized? Why am I getting baptized? Mm -hmm. It's just because of people. Then I understood later that mm. I have to, I had to be baptized. But I just think uh, I was not just baptized at the right time. Me knowing exactly yeah. why am I getting baptized? Because I remember I'm standing in front of the church, and <laughs> before you go in the water, they will like confess. <laughs> okay, I stood there and I say, I want to be baptized because it's very nice. Yeah, it's um, she has to be baptized. My, <laughs> the auntie that was there that say you need to be baptized was kind of disappointed in me. But it wasn't my fault. I didn't know why am I getting baptized. Uh -huh, sure. Then I got baptized and oh, it's my life. <laughs> this is not me. Why am I baptized? Am I playing with God? And I went to realize it later that I'm playing with God here. Before you get baptized, don't let people uh, force, force you to eat, mm -hmm. into being baptized. Mm -hmm. No. You yourself need to examine yourself first. And you need to know, why am I getting baptized? Mm -hmm. Or else you're going to ask yourself those questions, why am I baptized? Mm -hmm. Before you get into that, you must know, why am I baptized? And then I was like, so for me to be baptized is for my sins to be cleansed. And for me to, I want to be a born again which are the things I supposed to say the day I was getting baptized, but I just said it was very nice. <laughs> yeah, why? Because I didn't know. While we are at um, baptism, I have a friend that has the same experience, just because, but he is not a PK, but mm -hmm. because the parents have been going to church all these years and he has also just been following, oh, let me go to church and whatnot, until to a point he was also forced to get baptized. And then the day he got baptized, is the day that he said, no, I'm so angry at my parents because they forced me to do something that I don't even know about, I don't even have an understanding. And this person went out to get drunk. You know, the day you got baptized, you're like, okay, today I'm going to drink until I get drunk because I was forced to do it. Yes, it's it's not pressure. coming from my own, own heart. So it just, yeah, well, things we go through, eh? <laughs> yeah. So don't get baptized for the sake of getting baptized. If you don't have the full yes. understanding of what you're getting yourself into. Yes. Quick question. So if, if just, mm -hmm. just for interest, yeah. Yeah, just for interest, if 
I get baptized, you know, like let's say your friend or like you even um without I don't wanna say without consent, but if you get baptized, you know, just like that, without actually knowing. Can you get re baptized? They say no. No. You can only do it once. From there, when you realize your soul, that God says, before you speak, I already know what you want to say. So when you realize within you that, am I baptized? That's the time God starts speaking to you. And you realize that I just did it because people wanted me to be baptized, which is not right. You can't say I'm repenting because of my parents, because I'm not going with my parents to heaven. Mm -hmm. They are leaving me. Salvation is personal. So you're going to do this for your own. And how I found Jesus in the same way I was asking myself, why are you baptized? And when I learned what is baptism, is mm -hmm. when I realized that, like, God is within you. Mm -hmm. Understand what the meaning is. Now that you know the meaning, what are you going to do? about that. Mm -hmm. Am I just going to be a normal kid or am I going to accept Jesus as my personal savior? Which is what I did. I was like, I'm going to accept Jesus as my personal savior because whatever I do, what, whenever I speak, wherever I walk, it's God. Everything is God. It's Him. It's Him everywhere. It's because we're just forced to do it. But also to just answer your question, I think it, it depends on what type of baptism it was. Because you know, out there there is different mm -hmm. types of baptism. <laughs> so when you were a little baby, not knowing anything, or which baptism, to you also have to understand which baptism the Bible is saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, it, it depends. And then also, it depends also, there are other people that do baptism through the what, holy fire or what you need to walk on the fire or whatsoever mm -hmm. and all that. So it really depends on what baptism it is because I know if you have the baptism of holy fire and whatsoever, then you need to go back. What is the Bible saying about it? What type of baptism it is? What type of baptism was John the Baptist doing? So I thank God, you know, that I did have to go through all the bad things you know, like other people go through to come find the Lord. Mm. Other people, hey, they go through trial too. Mm. And then only after everything else, they come to be like, no, the Lord exists, the Lord loves you and whatnot. But then, you see why, why, I'm, why I'm grateful for being raised by a pastor? Mm -hmm. um, 10 June, 2010, by the way. Um, the topi, the, the pastor, the dad, mm. yeah, he called us apart, he called us apart, me and my brother. He was like, hey, you're my boys, get out of here. So yeah, we went, um, he sat us down, you know. So from that point onward, he, he told us, you know, what Christianity is like, how salvation is personal, mm -hmm. and he even told us straight, you're not going to heaven because I'm a pastor. Mm -hmm. You guys, you work, you don't work for it, but you know, you decide on yourself. So he called us apart, he told us, us apart, he told us, he walked us through, he gave us the whole lesson, you know, he made us understand. He he talked to us, not as you know the congregation, mm -hmm. but he talked to us talked to us from like a you know a friend or a father telling the son. So he explained everything to us. I understood from that moment I understood. And then I was like, you know what, if it, if it's like that then I would like to personally take the decision myself mm -hmm. and then you know give my life over to Christ. So mm -hmm. From that day onwards, we, we did, he led us in the salvation prayer, he prayed for us, and then he started to walk side by side with us, not like discipleship, mm -hmm. basically, yeah. Um, so from okay. then, I've, I've come to experience Christ for myself, but not through, not through the death. Mm -hmm. Your last words that you would put out there to everybody, all the Christians, or just anybody that is watching. To uh, pastor's kids out there and to everyone that is viewing uh, as a Christian, what I want to say to you is that don't do things because people want you to do and you don't know why you are doing it. And don't do things while you feel that I'm under pressure right now. You make the wrong decisions. 
you might do something that will end up destroying you yourself because you did it while you are under pressure. Sit down, talk to someone that you know that this person might be able to help me out before I make a decision. And do not worry about people judging you. People are always going to judge. When you do good, they have something to say. When you do bad, they have something to, to say. When you fall, they have something to say. When, you, when God lifts you up, they still have something to say. Okay. So don't live up to people. Be you. But at the same time, I will say, live your life, but live it right. Mm. Live it very much right, because life is too short for us to waste on things that are not important. Because I will say, pastors, our parents will say, you as pastors kids, you need to be like this. But sometimes they are right. They know the life. As they say, tomorrow is not promise, but yesterday was a guarantee. So we don't know what is before us, but we know where we are coming from. I wouldn't want to walk where I know that I fell here. Why must I still walk in the same path that I have fallen? I should move to the path where I know that I'm not going to fall. I will tell you, with Christ, you don't fall. You won't fall as long as you are by His side, following what He says, how the Bible, according to the Bible, because they say the Bible describes you and me. So don't let people out there describe you or label you. Don't even be sh uh, shy or ashamed to be labeled as a pastor's kid. Be very proud. Even me here, I would say I'm very proud to be called a pastor's kid. Even if they label me out there, and even if I'm doing something wrong, and they say pastor's kid, at least I remember that. Who am I? Mm -hmm. I'm a pastor's kid, and I need to live up to that. Not because people are saying. Do it for yourself. Not for other people, but for yourself. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be people. It's going to be you. Mm -hmm. Even on Judgment Day, you're not, you're not going to say that, yeah, I was doing it because who, who said I should? Or no. my parents, my or my parents forced me into doing this mm -hmm. and this. Because mm -hmm. if you are forced into something, if you, are not un you are, if you are uncomfortable with it, you talk to the people like, I do not feel good about this. Can I at least do this and this? Because when you do it, you are being pressured, you will end up destroying yourself. Because they just want you to be perfect. And if you fall, it's okay to fall. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say, yes, I have, I have fallen. It's okay to say, I have sinned, I have done a lot. But it depends on how you take it from there. Because mm -hmm. if I fall and I decide, but I know I fell, I fell I'm going to do the same thing. I'll keep falling and falling. By the time I realize this, it's going to be too late. Not only um, to the people that I'm looking up to. Number one is just for you. It's always just you. Thank you so much. Um, just to add on her closing or encouragement, uh, she mentioned on the Day of Judgment, you know, your pastor is not going to be there, which is now your dad, or if you are not a PK, it's your now your pastors. They're not going to speak for you. So your pastor, your parents, or so ever, as Paul has said, I'm also running my own race, meaning they are also running their own race, and us as individuals, we are also running our own race. And you will not want to now be there, and you are facing Jesus, and he's saying, get away, I don't know you. And you know, when I was there, my parents used to tell me, do this, 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 and I was doing it right, and so everybody said, yes, that was for your parents, but did you even have a relationship with me? Yes. Just to close up, mm -hmm. guys, it's not, it's not about the size in the fight. It's about the dog in the size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that? Okay. Forget but, about it. Yeah. But on a serious note, so <clears throat> um, to close off, did you say we are closing? Yeah, we are done. We are ending the video. Yeah. So I feel like the most important message in the Bible, or so far for me, is, is salvation. You know, and the Bible says in Romans that um, the only way for us to be saved is if we confess with our mouths and what? Believe in our hearts. Mm. So, for the person out there, 
you might not be a pastor's child, but you might have been raised by, you know, Christian parents. Mm -hmm. And then you think like, no, you know what, I'm, I'm already Christian by nature, so this is how I'm supposed to go, or this is how I'm supposed to live. It's not salvation until you decide and you confess it with your mouth. So for the person out there that has not confessed with their mouth, mm -hmm. please do. Until you say that, believe me, you are not saved. Sorry. So thank you guys for watching till the end. Uh, till next time, we'll have different guests that will come and speak on different uh, topics based on their own experience. So thank you guys for joining and thank you guys for accepting my invitation. Uh, with that said, don't forget to like like, subscribe, and uh, press on the notification bell for you to be notified whenever, oh, we, <laughs> whenever we upload a new video. <laughs> we are done. <laughs> MCJ Proverbs chapter 24 verse 16